Today, we're having a look at the Mac Studio, but unlike the upper 1% class, we're not having a look at the top of the line M1 Ultra one or the top spec version. Rather, we're having a look at the working man's Mac Studio, the $2,000 base configuration. Yes, I know that's still enough to probably feed an entire village somewhere. With that said, this configuration has the M1 Mac chip with a 10 core CPU and a 24 core GPU, 32 gigabytes of unified memory. We also have 512 gigabytes of storage on board, Wi-Fi 6, as well as Bluetooth 5. And yes, of course, needless to say, it's running Mac OS. Now, this is literally the cheapest Mac Studio you can get. And for a lot of people, this is gonna be the compromise between price and power. And we're gonna see from a practical point of view, A, whether or not if you even need the Mac Studio and B, exactly what it's going to provide for you should you opt to get it. As always, if you enjoy this review, hit that like button, sub to my channel, it generally helps me grow, let's go. Now, depending on your past ownership, the Mac Studio will either feel like a very tall Mac Mini or it's going to feel like the most portable, compact powerhouse desktop you've ever owned. But regardless of your take on it, at 3.7 inches tall, it's definitely a couple steps taller, literally, than the Mac Mini. But it still resembles the same conservative look we saw with that model, so it has that perfect square surface area on the top with nearly 8 inches on either side. On top of that, you still have that same shiny Apple logo on the very top with that reflective surface and the vast majority of the body continues to keep that same metallic feel that we've become used to. The front side of the Mac Studio is very utilitarian. So you have the LED indicator light to let you know the device is actually turned on, but on the other side, you have a dedicated full-sized SD card reader and two USB-C slots. This is super functional. These are pretty much all the ports you need at a whim and on the go. So it's nice to see that Apple put utility in mind over here. The actual sides of the Mac Studio are very linear. They're basically flat metallic surfaces. The backside of this device is a very happening place. So you have four Thunderbolt 4 ports, a 10 gigabit ethernet jack, the three pin power connector port, you have two USB-A ports from the Stone Ages, of course, and you have a underwhelming HDMI 2.0 port, the good old 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, and finally the power button. I really do wish this was a HDMI 2.1 port, but at least we have the Thunderbolt 4 ports there. Now, directly above the IO ports, you have this massive grill. This is the primary hot air exhaust vent. Now you're asking, hey, if that's where all that hot air is coming out from, where's it getting in from? Well, when you get to the bottom of the device, you'll notice you have this pretty large circular rubber ring. Now, the primary purpose here, of course, is to keep the Mac Studio in place and keep a grip on it. But directly above the circular rubber ring, you will notice you have more vents. And this is the primary area for the air to enter the device and serves as the air intake vent for the cool mechanism. Let's talk about performance because this is undoubtedly going to be the most significant factor that decides whether or not you even need a Mac Studio. So here's the thing, and there's no easy way to put this. If your intention is to buy this thing so you can have 15 tabs open on Google Chrome, watch 4K Netflix, or let's say do some basic word productivity or word processing, or even light HTML coding, well, here's the truth. You're not going to get any realizable benefit versus let's say using a more primitive MacBook Air M1 with just eight gigabytes of RAM on board. And the reason is because those activities are very light in nature. They do not require the heavy processing capabilities, even this base configuration Mac Studio brings to the table. In fact, you'd practically just be throwing $2,000 out into the air. That's literally what's gonna happen. And to the naked eye, you'll have no improvement in your quality of life whatsoever. So save yourself the money and rather spec more storage on the lower end Mac mini with its M1 chip or the MacBook Pro or Mac Air for that matter. Now let's take that argument a step further. Let's say even if you're doing slightly more intensive activities like 1080p video editing maybe, photo editing, or you're doing coding, or even if you are doing activities like let's say graphical design, Unless you're going into a niche enough area, you can still get away with using, let's say, the 16 gigabyte unified RAM version of the M1 Mac Mini. Believe it or not, 
the current video I'm making as well as all the videos I made in the past about year and a half are being edited on my M1 Mac mini in 4K. And for the most part, I can add as many layers as I need to with graphical effects and I have negligible frame drops. Now granted, I do have to make certain compromises like put it in better performance mode versus better quality mode. But still, it's a very much viable experience, so much so that I continue using it. Now, yes, if you have a Mac Studio and you're doing 4K video editing, for example, you're definitely gonna notice some improvements. So for example, you're gonna notice the fact that you don't ever have to put it in better performance mode. Rather, you can have everything in better quality, you can add as many 4K layers of video as you want, and there's just never gonna be a moment where you have to compromise on your workflow quality. Render times are also a little bit faster on this base configuration Mac Studio, but that usually varies anywhere from a couple of seconds to a couple of minutes at most. That's literally a coffee break's worth of improvement that you're noticing between the two devices. So again, ask yourself, if your threshold is around there or below that, then is the Mac Studio really providing you any benefit? It's not, I'm telling you right now. At this point, you're like, wow, Samsung or Microsoft is paying this guy some pretty good money to badmouth the Mac Studio. Well, I'm not badmouthing the Mac Studio at all. I'm literally making an argument as to how overpowered this thing is for the average end user. So you can save yourself some good money and actually get cheaper Apple products. It's not really a secret. Now, with that said, what is the threshold to actually buy a Mac Studio? So again, as a video content creator, if you are doing 6K editing or 8K editing, for example, that's where the Mac Studio really starts shining because the Mac Mini cannot handle that kind of workflow, at least in a effective manner. So what that means is when you are doing heavy duty video editing like that, the Mac Studio will actually give you a viable workflow and respectable render times, whereas to less powerful devices start struggling. Not just that, if you are someone who's doing multi-layered programming, you're running tons and tons of lines that are being executed, you want that extra horsepower. Or if you're someone, for example, who's developing intensive graphical frameworks, you're gonna want those 24 core GPUs at a bare minimum, if not even more power than that with the higher spec Mac Studios. But again, you're probably noticing a theme here. These are very niche, unique industries and you need to have a very special use case. The average day-to-day -day use case doesn't apply here. You need to be in the right profession, doing the right kind of workflow to justify having a Mac Studio. Now with that said, there is also one major benefit of having a Mac Studio versus let's say a Mac Mini. And that is the fact that you can support up to five unique displays at the same time four of which can run at a 6K resolution and one which will run at 4K. Compare this to let's say the Mac mini, which can only support up to two displays at a time and only one of them can run at 6K while the other run at 4K. And yes, I know there are ways around that, but we're talking about a native support here. But again, unless you are, let's say in the Forex industry, you're a stock trader, or you're someone who needs multiple displays displaying unique information at the exact same time, how often do you find people just casually rocking five displays in their room? Oh, hey, I just wanted to watch five different shows at the same time. Doesn't happen, right? So keep all those things in mind because the Mac Studio literally is screaming at you and saying, listen, I am intended for a very niche market. Now I do realize we've only covered the tip of the surface in terms of what the Mac Studio is capable of. If you're looking for more benchmark hardcore theoretical numbers, there are so many YouTube videos out there and amazing ones, go check those out. But this was a practical review. So starting at $2,000 USD, I think the Mac Studio is a fantastic device. It really is Apple's best work yet in the computational industry, in my honest opinion. Never before have you seen a combination of such a powerful machine in such a compact form factor? In fact, the PC industry has been pretty stagnant in that regard for the past decade or so. So Apple definitely brings a lot of value here and this is a very powerful and capable device as long as the person using it appreciates the kind of power and performance you're getting with it. So if you know who you are, you know who you are. But for the rest of you, you probably came here looking for some reasons to buy the Mac Studio and I gave you a hand full of reasons not to get the Mac Studio. But hey, with that said, if you have the budget and at the same time you do have an appreciation for the power, by all means, go spend it. Like I said, this is a well-built device, but if you don't have the use case, you're just not gonna get a lot of value of that $2,000 or even higher with top-end configuration you're gonna spend on this device. I hope you guys enjoyed this practical review. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and sub to my channel. Thanks so much for watching. Catch you in the next one.